Hey, it's Ashley, and I'm back with chapter four of Marry My Husband. And Jiwon is slowly coming to terms with realizing she is back in the past. Her dad gave her a second chance to live the life that she actually deserves. And she's ready. She's ready to change her fate. Uh, so we're on chapter four called Throw Out Trash, Pick Up Cash. I like the name of that. If someone were to say it's something that hasn't ever happened yet, G1 had no retort. Her terrible marriage, her fight against cancer, Minwan and Suman's adultery, even her murder, all only existed inside her mind. Right now, it was 2009. She hadn't jumped feet first into hell yet, and the two of them were officially considered a couple by everyone they knew, but none of that mattered. She needed to end their relationship if she wanted to change the future for the better. She looked down at her vibrating phone and flipped it open. As soon as she accepted the call, she heard Min Wan's voice. Hello, Jiwon, where are you? Yuksam Dong. I'm also in Yuksam Dong right now. I have some time before I need to go back to the company, so I'll head to you, Minwan said. Why would you come here? Jiwan's voice felt unfamiliar to her own ears because of how frosty it was. Minwan spoke hesitantly, clearly flustered. I just... You seemed really unwell today. Are you sick? Should I go to the hospital with you? Jiwan's long hair tickled her face as a gust of wind winded its way between the tall buildings. The silhouette of a young woman wearing thick glasses and carrying documents was reflected in the glass door of the cafe. Seeing it ground her in this new reality, giving her the courage to meet Minwan. Then come to the cafe near the intersection, the big one with the two floors, she said. Okay, I'm nearby, so give me about five minutes. Minwan hung up. The cafe was quiet because it was past lunchtime. Jiwon opened her worn wallet and held out a card. One venti iced Americano, double shot please. The coffee came out quickly. Sitting down near a window on the second floor with her paper cup, she could see the streets of Yoksamdang were unchanged from her memory. Jiwon opened her notebook to write the name of the employee she gave the documents to, as well as the time they were stamped. Then she pulled out her phone to call the department head and report it in. Ji Hyuk answered the phone as soon as it rang. Yes, Miss Kang? Hi, Mr. Yu. I just delivered the documents to Bonwin Food. The employee said she would contact you separately again. There's still a lot of time left before I'm supposed to clock out. Should I return to the company? It's fine. The office is idle, so you can clock out now, Ji Hyuk said. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow. The line went silent. Had she said something wrong? Jiwon glanced at the screen and saw that the call was still connected. She lifted her phone to her ear again. Um, Mr. Yu, can I hang up? Oh, I apologize. This time a reply came right away, but tomorrow Saturday. Oh, it is. Jiwon laughed awkwardly. I've been so out of it. Then I'll see you on Monday. You should visit the hospital, Ji Hyuk said. I will. Thank you for your concern. Right before Jiwon shut her phone, someone affectionately rubbed her shoulders from behind. Jiwon. It was Minwon's voice. Chills ran down Jiwon's back and her hands turned numb. As a result, her phone fell beneath the chair, tall chair. Sorry, did I scare you? Minwon quickly picked it up and held the phone towards her. The screen showed the call still hadn't ended. Jiwon snapped it shut and put it in her bag. No. What's the occasion? You're having an Americano? The occasion. Jiwon looked down at her coffee and remembered she used to only drink cappuccinos. All women do so, not just Jiwon. It was because of a scene that appeared in a popular drama where the bodies of the lead characters, a man who wore a handsome designer tracksuit, and a stunt woman were swapped. There was a famous kiss scene in that show which involved the foam milk of a cappuccino. I watched this drama. I can't remember what the name of it is. I'll look it up after this. It's refreshing, not too sweet either. If Minwan were to attempt a cappuccino kiss right now, Minwan felt confident she would whack him in the head with her cup. 
Anyway, there's something I have to tell you. Let's... Before she could say break up, Minwan's phone rang. Just a moment. It's Mr. Yu. Minwan made an apologetic gesture with his hand and flipped open his phone. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. No, I'm done. Yes. Yes, I'll head back right away. After disconnecting, Minwan stood up. Sorry, he said to come back because of the office because the office is busy. I'll go to your place after getting off work. I should move first. Minwan quickly dashed down the stairs. Jiwan sat up straight and slipped more coffee through the straw. Cappuccinos with their foam and sugar and cinnamon were too sweet. Jiwan's stomach always felt uneasy after drinking one, but she had slowly become addicted to the taste. Then she came across an Americana one day. It was very bitter. She wondered why people willingly drank something that tasted more like medicine than the coffee she knew. But after trying it a few times, she noticed the drink had a deep, nutty aftertaste to it. Eventually, she became more used to the flavor until she only drank Americanos. That cappuccino-like bastard. Jiwon <sighs> swirled the straw around in her coffee and found the sound of the ice clinking together pleasant. After a few more seconds of that, she pulled her notebook out again, flipping past work notes to a blank page. I won't live stupidly this time. I'll put the trash in the trash can and move along with my life. I need more money. Her dad was frugal and saved money his entire life, but he hadn't known anything about stocks. He never had any insurance either, so all his savings had gone towards the treatment of his cancer. Jiwon hadn't skimped either. She earned money through tutoring, and she even secretly took out loans that her dad ha didn't know about, all to help pay for his hospital fees. As a result, all Jiwon had left was 10 million won, the deposit of her department, apartment, and another 10 million won she had received as condolence money following her father's death. But that wasn't enough money she could spend. That wasn't enough money she could spend freely, as she also had a debt to the bank of 20 million won. She could move right away if she had to, but that would leave her living expenses in a dangerous state. She should have memorized some lottery numbers. G1 thought to herself with a wry smile. In the past, she would have sighed over money worries, but now she just laughed. This was nothing compared to how bad things had gotten in her past life. Still, she did need to find a way to pay back her debts and save money. But how? Jiwon chewed on the back of her pen when a light bulb suddenly turned on in her head. Minwon Park. He was financially... He was fanatical about stocks and well-versed in all the complicated jargon related to them. Once he got a taste of money, whatever stocks he laid his hands on, what a, once he got a taste of money, whatever stocks he laid his hands on skyrocketed. For now, at least, his luck ran out later in the future when he blew all their money on a few bad trades. Then they relied solely on Jiwon's salary to get by. She forgot its name, but she remembered Minwan proudly took her to an expensive restaurant around this time after getting his first taste of money. Minwan, aren't you pushing yourself too much? Of course not. I made it big this time. I'll buy you food like this for the rest of your life. A blot of ink spread over the page where she pressed the pen to the paper. Flower petals fluttered past the window, and the sign across the road turned green. Minwan Park, at the very least, in this life, you're going to have to be of some help to me. Jiwan gripped her phone, raising it slowly. It fit perfectly in her hand as she opened it with a click. She hadn't even heard the notification, but there was a text message waiting for her. Minwan, my other half. My other half, my ass. I should have just halved his head. Juan clicked her tongue as she pressed the button to read the message. Minwan, are you getting off work right away? Should I pick up some chicken wings before going to your house? Why is my house getting filled with trash when it's not a trash can? Juan became more determined to move. She closed the message and began to type a response to Minwan. I wasn't feeling too well earlier. Do you want to go to a street bar later? Sure, I'll contact you later. A reply arrived before Jiwon could close her phone. She read the message and began writing in her notebook. 
I'll become healthy and be running around before I know it. I'll earn tons of money and I'll get married to a man wrapped around my finger, someone who would even die for me. I'll be happy for the rest of my life. I promise, Dad. I'll become happy. I'll put myself before everything else. I'll live doing anything I want. She drank the remainder of her coffee as she schemed against Min Juan. In 2009, Min Juan made it big with a couple of stocks in 2010. After getting married to Ji Wan, he dedicated all his time to stocks, even quitting work to day trade. In 2011, he began to verbally abuse Ji Wan. According to him, it was all her fault that he was unlucky in losing money on his investments. Why had she lived like that? What was she so scared of that she couldn't come out into the world and continued to struggle by herself. It became more comical the more she thought about it. There was still some time left before dinner. Jiwan left the cafe and got on the subway. The trains were always overflowing with people during rush hour, but she was focused on the passing scenery outside of the window. Arriving home, she remembered the passcode to her apartment was Min Wan's birthday. Jiwan let out a disgusted groan and immediately changed the number. 090410. It was her new code for April 10th, 2009, the day of her rebirth, baby. It was the day a woman's life restarted, the day she was sent 10 years into the past after her horrible marriage ended with her being murdered by her husband and his mistress. Hmm. Mr. Park, where's Jiwon? As soon as Minwon stepped into the office, Suman came paddling over searching for someone behind his back. While Jiwan was tall and lean, Suman barely reached 160 centimeters. She was real, well dressed and cute though. Minwan grinned and put his bag on his seat. She took the afternoon off, but I think she's feeling a little better now. That's a relief. Why isn't she responding to my texts? Suman's shoulders dropped, but she soon lifted her head and beamed brightly at Minwan. She must not have seen them. I should buy some chicken and go surprise her after getting off work. Minwan was flustered. He wanted to tell Suman that he and Jiwan had plans later, but he thought Suman's feelings might be hurt. What is it, Mr. Park? Seeing his hesitation, Suman tilted her head. Oh, actually, the thing is, Jiwan and I made plans to meet later. I see. Suman's shoulders dropped again. Min Wan hesitated once more, feeling like he was in the wrong here. Then, can I come with you? Drinks are on me. It's because I was so worried, Suman added with a whisper. It's a secret from Jiwan, okay? She lifted her, ind her index finger to her lips. Our Jiwan might look strong outside, but she's actually really delicate on the inside. You know, you know that, don't you? She likes it so much when you surprise her with the ta-da whenever she's struggling by herself. Her ex-boyfriend also. Is this an office or a cafe? A deep voice spoke up. Ji Hyuk was standing nearby, looking at the two of them from behind the partition. Sorry, Mr. Yu. Would you like a cup of coffee? Suman clasped her hands together cutely. No, both of you, please focus on your work. With that, he disappeared behind the partition. Suman sighed in relief and smiled up at Min Wan. Okay, let's go together. I'm actually Ji Wan's energy booster. It hadn't been that long since Suman entered the company, but it was well known that the two were close. It was because no one expected Jiwon, who only socialized with Minwon, to have such a pretty and outgoing friend. Jiwon's expression loosened when she was with Suman, too. Minwon hesitated for only a moment and nodded. Then let's do that. Suman hopped back to her seat. Across from her was Minwon's desk, and two spots from his was Jiwon's. Minwan grabbed the box and documents he brought from earlier and took them to Ji Hyuk's desk. Here's th here are the samples. I emailed the report to you. I need your signature right here. I don't know why, but I don't like him, Minwan thought as he watched Ji Hyuk flip through the documents with his long, thick fingers. Mr. Park. After skimming all the documents and counting the number of samples, Ji Hyuk gave Minwan a dry look. Yes. Did you check the samples properly? There are supposed to be 10. Minwan scanned the box and saw that there were only nine. He remembered there had been 10 when the employee was explaining it to him. The most likely explanation he decided was that one had fallen out of his car. Oh, there are nine. A wrinkle appeared above Ji Hyuk's eyebrows. 
Oh, there are nine, he echoed. You can't afford to be mindless like this. I told you, the office is busy. I'm sorry, I must have left it in the car. Hurry on and bring it. We need to confirm it and send it over to the research team. Bastard. Minwan cursed at the man who was already a department head, although they were similar in age. Honestly, picking up samples and writing reports was something Ji Hyuk could have had an entry level employee do. Minwan had become annoyed the moment Ji Hyuk ordered him to do menial work like this. Minwan picked up the matching blue flip phone he got with Jiwon from his desk. Just then, a small white hand came crawling up from behind the partition and stuck a yellow post it note onto his desk. It's okay, Mr. Park. Let's go eat something yummy with Jiwon later. If he told Jiwon about what just happened, she wouldn't have paid him any mind, saying something like it was mis a mistake on his part. Minwon tapped the partition twice in response and headed down to the parking lot. He picked up the sample that was lying behind, lying around in the back of his car, and threw and he threw away any trash. Jiwon may have been used to this untidiness, but Suman might think he was a slob. This motherfucker. So lame. Okay, so let me see. What is this drama? I remember watching this. And it had... It had what's his name from... Uh... Oh my gosh, why can't I think of it now? When she was... that She owned the company and she fell over in North Korea... Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, now I can't think of it. Hmm, I gotta look it up. Okay. Crash landing on you. That's what it is. I could not think of it to save my life. Okay, so crash landing on you. We're going to do seven degrees. <laughs> Hyunbin. Okay, Hyunbin. Secret garden. That's what it is. Secret Garden. I haven't seen that in forever. Anyways, this chapter was funny. Um, mostly because we we see Jiwon starting to formulate her plan of how she's going to get her life back on track. Uh, and we get, ugh, we get, we learn a little bit more about annoying ass Suman and Minhwan who I will never like. I'll never like them. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, uh, leave a comment and subscribe if you like, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.